In this lecture, we're going to be discussing the history of evolution, so the ideas that predate Darwin and then the, the ideas that come after Darwin, um, and how these uh, different ideas affected Charles Darwin and his development of the theory of natural selection and, and, and how that um, worked into the ideas of evolution of the time. So probably the first people we need to go back to are the philosophers of Plato and Aristotle. And we can remind ourselves that Plato had this idea of the cave, where there was this roadway and people would walk across this roadway. There was a fire which cast shadow or cast light this way and um, cast shadows, whatever was coming across the roadway on this wall. And then there were these people who were sitting down here and can basically watch the shadows come across the wall. And so whatever was seen in the shadow was a, an imperfect representation of what was actually being brought across the roadway. And, and so any, any diversity that was found in, you know, say, a horse, there's lots of different kinds of horses, that diversity was explained as just an incomplete manifestation of what the true horse was. But species were fixed. Species were individually and they were fixed. Aristotle furthered this idea by developing the scala naturae, where you have these different rungs on this ladder, and there is a place for each species, and a species is in each place. But species do not change or not, do not go from one rung to the le next. You are on a rung, and that is where you will always be. Again, this idea of species, species being fixed. You're, many years later, you started to have the development of the idea of evolution. Uh, one of the people who was influential in Darwin was his grandfather, Erasmus Darwin. He was one of the leading intellectuals at the time in uh, England, and he was a physician by trade, but he also was a poet, a botanist, and a naturalist, a philosopher. And he talked a lot about the idea of how we, um, how Earth has this diversity of organisms. For example, he said, the final course of this contest among males seems to be that the strongest and most active animal should propagate the species, which should thus be improved. Sounds a lot like natural selection, doesn't it? But this is what Charles Darwin's grandfather said. He ended up writing a book also um, called The Laws of Organic Life, in which he suggests that all life came from one living filament. Another person who was important in the, in the development of the ideas of evolution was John Baptiste Lamarck. He was a Frenchman who started out not as a naturalist, but then started to be st to study botany and quickly became very good at this. So good that he obtained a position as an assistant botanist at the Royal Botanical Garden, and then eventually was placed as curator curator over all organisms that don't have backbones at the Muse National Museum of Natural History. In fact, he's the one that coined the term invertebrates. His theories, though, um, as he started to develop these, were largely ignored, and he was even attacked during his lifetime. So what is his theory? Well, he's the one that came up with the idea of inheritance of acquired characteristics. He, he um, broke away from the idea that species are fixed and that species can change over time, also agreeing with the ideas of Erasmus Darwin. He also liked the idea that this these, these changes take lots of time. So this is getting away from the old idea of a young Earth as well, allowing Earth to have millions of years. He um, believed that organisms always were changing from simple forms to more complex forms. And the way that he described this was, he used the word law here, we would probably call this a hypothesis nowadays, um, but he basically said that when there was a change in the environment, you had a change in the behavior. Change in behavior led to greater use or disuse, and greater use led to a structure increasing in its function or complexity, and lesser use, lo a loss of the structure or shrinking. Um, one of the classic examples, of course, is with giraffes. The reason that giraffes have long necks is maybe there was a change in the environment, like a drought, and then that drought led to um, you know, the giraffes reaching and stretching their necks up and even, you know, their tongues coming out and, and, and that greater use of the necks and of the tongue muscles and of the lip muscles led giraffes to their current um, form of long necks, 
you know, these huge t black tongues that can come out and, s and scrape a, a, a branch of all of its leaves and so forth. And, and the reason that giraffes have that is because those changes that were acquired during their lifetimes due to the striving were then inherited. Obviously, the first part of this idea sounds okay, but the second part is, well, this fall, is where this falls apart because it doesn't matter what happens during your lifetime, those changes are not passed on in the genetics. So Lamarck, though, basically took the idea of the scala naturae and turned it into an escalator. So the way you do explain all of the diversity of life that currently exists on, in present day Earth is that you say, well, the most complex form started out really simple a long, long time ago and gradually changed a little bit at a time. But notice this is linear evolution. There is no branching or there is no relationship between one form of life on the planet that currently exists to another form of life on the planet that currently exists. They come from independent evolutionary lineages. But Lamarck did have an influence on Darwin. Darwin wrote that he read his uh, views and it excited some attention. And he liked the idea that you could explain the diversity of life on this planet through natural law and not miraculous interposition. So the similarities with Darwin's ideas were they both agreed that adaptive changes occurred in, in lineages. Darwin, though, thought that this happened in a tree-like fashion, whereas um, Lamarck thought it was linear. They also both agreed that changes are ultimately driven by the environment and that it requires long periods of time for evolution to take place. The differences, though, were Lamarck always thought there was this progression to perfection, that there was some inner mystical goal or something that the organisms were striving towards. He also um, thought that the operating mechanism was organismal striving rather than natural selection. And he did not think that species actually went extinct. Rather, they just evolved away. Darwin agreed with the idea of extinction, which was proposed by Cuvier. And, and then, as I said, Lamarck was linear evolution, where Darwin was tree-like. 